Hey guys, Danny here. I got Kai, and uh, Kai here is also a PM. There's not a lot of PMs from Waterloo that we yeah. know, that we know, <laughs> like, that we know. So, uh, so I'm actually really happy that uh, that Kai's here. So, Kai worked as a QA at BlackBerry um, in Waterloo. It's a humble beginning. Humble beginnings. <laughs> humble beginnings. BlackBerry is actually one of the one of the companies I I, I really wanted to work for. Uh, before coming to the yeah yeah i think it used to be the shit and then now it's <laughs> it'll, it'll, get, it'll get back there okay. fingers crossed <laughs> waterloo pride yes and then um he was also a, he was a pm at event moby um and then a pm at groupon and then a pm at if we a down in sf mm -hmm. and then um also then a pm most recently pm at pager duty right yeah. so uh definitely a list of uh a uh, list of really uh, great qual qualifications something if you guys are interested in uh, kind of transitioning into PM or kind of understanding what the PM world is all about. This is a perfect time, perfect video. Um, so yeah, let's get started. What got you into uh, PMing, engineering in general? So with regards to engineering, I actually did it because my dad was like, you should do software engineering. Uh -huh. And I was choosing between double degree uh, and SE. Uh -huh. And so that's how I ended up like in software. Oh, okay. Um, but I, in high school, I actually did a lot of robotics and so we, we competed internationally at this robotic like competition and so on. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of fun and that's where I guess I programmed more and like I kind of enjoyed seeing the software side of things. Yeah. And so I you know, initially I was like not knowing what to expect, you know, in a software engineering job, but yeah. I knew that I was interested in like tech and it seemed like this was a good fit. And so that's kind of how I got started. Do you want to talk a little bit more about how that kind of transitioned you into uh, doing PM? That's an interesting story. In the first co-op, I actually didn't know how to navigate the job market much. And so mm. I literally took the first offer that I got, which was QA at BlackBerry. Mm. Um, so that was an interesting experience, but like I learned I definitely didn't like QA, so not going back. <laughs> yeah. um, and then for my second one, I did uh, web, web dev at like the small startup, it was like five people. Uh, so learned a lot, but it was really like scrappy. And so I kind of wanted a bigger company, a bigger vibe, uh, like learn from different, like different kind of experiences. Um, and so in f for, I was intervie interviewing with a bunch of Toronto startups and companies. Um, and in one of the interviews I had for web dev, uh, the CTO of that company, this event movie, uh, he, he like I, I was telling him about my experience uh, being involved in this club on campus, which we had recently got off the ground called Product Vision Club. And so we were kind of bringing together a community of people into product and uh, who, who wanted to build things. And he really liked that and somehow it stood out. And uh, he reached back, like uh, he reached out a week later and he's like, uh, I don't know if you would be a good fit for engineering compared to some of the other candidates we interviewed. So basically a low key rejection. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, he said that, you know, he'd be happy to open up a PM position for me. And um, I was like, wow, I, I haven't got any other PM interview in like the job mind cycle and so on at that point. And I was like, and here I, and here I was getting a PM offer. So um, that was really like the crossroads because I had a software, a, a couple of software things lined up, um, mm -hmm. like potentially, which I could choose. Um, and I was like, should I do that or should I go into the PM route and then see what that's about? And so I guess I decided to take the plunge. Uh, yeah. So um, I guess it was like a combination of like right time, right place, mm -hmm. um, a bit of luck, a bit of preparation. Um, but that's kind of my like how I broke into product, yeah, and then it sort of spiraled. Uh, but you just got more. That. You got more interested yeah. in it. Yeah, I think that kind of was kind of my story too. It's like, like I thought I wanted to be a like a dev, like a like say like mm -hmm. a software engineer for for a while, and then I realized, hey, maybe, you know, truth has it, like I'm not that good. Yeah, <laughs> same. <laughs> <laughs> and then and no, no, and then and then yeah, but then you start realizing like, hey, but I still want to build, mm -hmm. and then that's my my when people ask like how I got into PM, I'd be like, because I realize. I'm not good at, I'm not great, like, uh, at, like, let's say developing. Uh -huh. Um, and, but like at the same time, like I, like I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. But then I had to know your strengths and your weaknesses. And then I found mm -hmm. like product, like product was like a yeah. good strength. It's like and a like, job and you're like in the middle. Exactly. You're <laughs> right. right. Like business engineering and design and you're right in the yeah, middle. And that's the perfect. fun part. Right. Yeah. Um, so like something, if you guys mm -hmm. are kind of in a crossroads, like, Hey, I want to do design and also want to do development. And I kind of like the business and the kind of the strategy side. It's like, perfect. yeah, actually you gotta go backtrack uh, to like high school Kai. How okay. were you? How were you in high school? How was I in high school? I was actually pretty shy, introverted, 
quite fat. I think it was borderline obese. So. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, I, you know, it's come, I've come a long way, I guess, hopefully in that sense. Um, and so, I, I, I mean, looking back, I don't think so. High school me would have thought I would be like what I am today, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, that's the journey that yeah. we all go through. But I guess I was still interested in tech and yeah. like building. And I actually was in the production crew. So like we, uh, our high school had like a, a proper theater. And so we used to host musicals. Um, and we were like one of the only schools in the country to do, to do that. I went to high school in oh. Dubai. So okay. Um, so that was really fun. And like, I guess it was mi- kind of like being like a, a film, like a director-ish kind yeah, of, yeah. right? Still but, have managerial kind yeah, of Yeah, and it honestly had a lot of overlap with what you do as a PM, right? Because you have to like work with different sort of like people, right? Like the stage props and like... Uh, the designers, the, the the actors, the director, and so on for the musical. Um, and so that was like a really fun experience. And maybe that's kind of what got me interested in like working across something mm-hmm. as opposed to like focusing on one specific aspect. Yeah. So you worked at big companies before like Groupon because Groupon was relatively large when you joined. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then you also worked at smaller companies. I'm not quite sure if PagerDuty was like smaller team. If we, I'm not sure how what the size are, but like how would you compare your kind of like Groupon experience versus like smaller company sizes? So I'm really glad I got the like both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that for PM internships, they're actually really hard to, uh, it's really hard to have like an effective you know, product development cycle and like the three to four months that yeah. you have. And so a lot of times you have, you focus on specific aspects of it. Uh, which stage of the, like, you know, are you in, are you doing user research mm-hmm. or like, are you actually developing it or like, yeah. have you launched and are you like iterating and yeah. doing A-B testing and all of that? So like which aspect of mm-hmm. the PM's process you, you focus on in your internship also differs. Um, and I think the best like learning experience I got uh, in terms of like, in a limited time span was yeah. at Groupon at a bigger company because mm-hmm. um, there's a lot more resources and I think it's a lot more structured in terms of like the internship program yeah. itself uh, for PM specifically. Um, I think pager duty was, it also depends on which company you go to, right? So pager duty was a B2B. Yeah. Um, they sell to businesses and their release cycle is a lot slower. Yeah. Um, and also it's because of the nature of their product. Like mm-hmm. they're sort of the best in the industry for what they do. Mm-hmm. And so they have to really make sure things are good, right? Yeah. Um, and it's kind of different in, in a consumer perspective. Like so Groupon was consumer focused, right? Yep. And in that you kind of just keep uh, keep doing A-B tests and you keep testing. Yeah, and keep reiterating, and keep yeah, pushing. And, and you break things, it's fine, you fix it, mm-hmm. right? Um, but it wasn't like as friendly to, uh, I guess you couldn't mess up that, often and that easily because you had like critical customer uh customers depending on you if you're a b2b company um and so that different like like changes the experience you have right and so um i think it's good to experience a lot of different things but you probably have the most direct impact in in something like a consumer facing bigger company where you can actually um do things so now moving on to your experiences like what do you felt like was the top experiences that kind of helped you out helped you out in terms of moving towards pm and like kind of shaping you yourself your perspectives on pm okay so i think the biggest thing um that helped me break in was i mean i was i'm naturally inclined to go to events i mean uh, mm-hmm. I, I i guess i click interested on almost everything yeah, yeah. no i see that <laughs> yeah um but, but more so it's like being uh, inquisitive and taking initiative. I think those two like aspects are mm-hmm. what you see in like really good PMs in industry anyway. Yeah. Um, but you know, on a university level, I guess what I did based on just like what I was interested in is like um, actually got involved with the club and mm-hmm. it was like really new. So I helped out and uh, I'm like friends with the founders now and, and they're doing PM in industry and so on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess that just stood out for, for like the CTO like the interview yeah um, and I mean that's personally speaking that's what has helped me a lot more as well yeah because it really gives you like talking points right like the more you're able to talk about your things, experience yeah yeah um, it's just like easier to go through the interview especially because PM interviews are, are very like subjective in the yeah. sense behavioral that, yeah it's not like <laughs> this is a right answer right it's, yeah it's a uh, 
if you have interesting things to talk about, if you're able to accomplish interesting things, uh, and like have learnings out of trying, mm -hmm. um, I think that's more important. So I mm -hmm. think it's just like learn by doing, you know, taking on a project and going from zero to one. Yeah. Uh, in any context. I yeah. Think that's, Anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like you can do a podcast, right? You could. Yeah. Uh, uh, you could do a startup. You, you could do a do, side project. You yeah, you win. could take a blog, yeah. and if you do a really good job at the blog, yeah, I mean you're using PM skills right there, right? Exactly. Um, so it's it's a in my case also I uh, I sort of like revived or uh, turned around this conference which started out in Waterloo like 15 years ago, mm -hmm. um, and it's called the Canadian Undergraduate Technology Conference. I think that really helped me because, you know, we had to recruit a team mm -hmm. uh, and it was a lot like building an experience. And yeah. in this case, the product was the conference. And so how could we like make it better than the previous one? How, what could we iterate on in terms of what like the attendees liked or didn't like and so on. Right. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it is analogous to, to what you would do in a product context. I think uh, it's also super valuable to have some technical exposure. So yes. uh, engineering internships, uh, working on side projects and going to hackathons and actually building things with friends mm -hmm. um, and working with design as well. Yeah. Um, so I think just getting yourself exposed to as much as possible, different things in engineering and design and business um, that sets you up for success. I think um, if you want to get into PM and, and actually like learn more and, and do well on the job as well. I forgot where I heard this from. It's not it's not from me, but like I mm -hmm. heard this person talking about PM. It's talking about like how uh, PM is actually a lifestyle. PM is like all about initiatives as well, right? Yeah. Like you're literally the um, the glue to the team. You're well, technically you're supposed to be like kind of like a also like a firefighter to the team. Right? Yeah. And then another side of it, it's like strategy. If your team makes one step, you should already have to be 10 steps ahead uh -huh. um, in multiple directions, right? Yeah. So it's like, you, and you gotta kind of live that life. Like you kind of have to MVP your life. So you can, so you have to live by <laughs> MVPs, right? <laughs> like uh, if someone like has like too much going on or, or whatever, then you're like, hey, wait a second. He's supposed to be MVPing this product, but he's not even MVPing it like life, yeah, right? Yeah. And I think that's very important is that like, it's, it's kind of a mentality. Mm -hmm. um, it's also like less, like less, I think for engineering, um, more so for PM, it's like you kind of have to live that lifestyle, live that mentality. I totally agree. It's like um, you always want to be in the mindset of like, how can I, you know, take something and make it better, right? Yeah. Uh, you're always thinking of ways to, to improve on things or like finding opportunity, right? Yes. Like, yeah. Oh, I think you can actually do this here, right? And and mm -hmm. so on. So I think it's definitely something you sort of condition yourself to to thinking and looking at the world in that perspective. Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah I totally agree. Still think. Like there's a lot to yeah like a same lot here like go. yeah you, like we we are ourselves our own startup We're slash like, our own product exactly right? Right? so keep iterating we have to keep We're iterating. We're still in the MVP stage. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. What are kind of what are the top three things um, that you should would suggest to let's say first year Kai or like someone tries to, that's trying to get into uh, PM? What are first kind of uh, top three things that you would suggest they they could start doing today? All right. So if you're looking to get into PM, um, yeah. I think. PM and entrepreneurship actually have a lot of things in common. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one sets up, if you're doing one, you set yourself up for success in the other and mm -hmm. vice versa. And so I think, you know, first of all, it's being, uh, taking initiative, right? Uh, I think that's what makes you stand out as, as someone in university, as taking on those leadership roles. And, you, you know, if you, if you can't find a leadership role or you didn't get accepted to one, uh, just start your own thing. Yeah, right? make your own. Yeah, right? like yeah. a lot of times you can get the same experience and, and learn the same things that um, uh, that other people in those specific roles have. Yeah. Just by doing it yourself, right? And so a lot of times it's like the mindset that you take. It's like, if I want to learn something about this, you don't have to wait for it to be handed to you. You can create it. Um, yeah. And so create your own experiences. Exactly. And, and, and uh, you have a lot of fun along the way. It's going to be challenging, but mm -hmm. you know, you grow as uh, in the process. So I think that's the high level is like taking initiative, right? Um, the, probably the second one would be building relationships. I think as mm -hmm. a PM, um, in especially at bigger companies, uh, all, all, all my managers were super connectors, right? Like everyone loved them and everyone knew them. Yeah. And so I think that requires like a certain like aspect of like being able to understand and empathize and empathy yeah. and, and really like know what people like like mm -hmm. and want and uh, sort of how you can cater to their needs right because mm -hmm. as a PM you're a facilitator um, at, at your core yeah and and so I think being able to you know relate to a lot of different people and 
and get along with them and understand like you know what makes them tick and and so on right mm -hmm. having a diverse friend group yeah. uh, definitely helps and just getting to know people um and talking and, and being comfortable communicating mm -hmm. and and sort of doing those kind of things yeah. so i think that's definitely uh it's uh, it's not just for pm i think it's life skills it's life I skills yeah, definitely life yeah. skills yeah um it was more so for PM as a job. And then probably the third one, I think, would be learning how to learn or mm -hmm. essentially being able to dive into something that you don't know much about and mm -hmm. like getting a reasonable understanding of what's going on, right? Because yeah. as a PM, you context, context switch a lot, right? You have to do a lot of different things. You have to learn to work with a lot of different people. Like juggle sales, a lot of teams, juggle a lot, exactly, a lot of people, like yeah. Sales, marketing, strategy, business, leadership, yeah. um, uh, like working with engineers, you know, exactly. maybe working on the design, the next R, right? And so you really have to know a lot about, um, at least a reasonable about, uh, you really have to know a reasonable amount about a lot of things. Yes. Um, and so I think that's the biggest, uh, the, the top three. Things. Like I think a lot of people don't know is that like PM, like you said, like empathy is huge, right? So even from like my interviews, hey, what's your strongest strength? Yeah. I would say like empathy. And they'll be like, wait, like they're expecting like a technical answer. Yeah. And I think like, I think empathy as a PM is very important because like if yeah. you don't understand your team, you don't understand your customers, you, you don't, don't understand un yeah. your users. Exactly. Yeah. Then like, then, then you're literally not a PM. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, like yeah. as a PM, like the, at the core, facilitator is huge. Mm -hmm. And at the core, facilitator is being empathetic. Yeah. And I think like that's very important is like you have to learn to put yourself in other people's shoes. Because I've seen PMs who are, who are less so empathetic. Yeah. And that's when like like yes like they could they possibly they possibly ship good products but then the team suffers yeah right and i think like you have to understand like if you're if you could see by like let's say your 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 end side and you can see mm -hmm. like by design side like how they tick and how they think yeah. like what you said i think yeah. that's very key to like a very long-term perspective of a very prosperous team what are your kind of top three interview tips for uh, people getting pm interviews it's really hard in pm interviews mm -hmm. because of the fact that um, there is no right answer mm -hmm. and so unlike in engineering where you know problems might have different approaches to yeah. be solved but there is a solution you kind of converge yeah. right? and you know that this is the best way to do it yeah. typically um, I think for PM what what I've noticed is the way you think your approach that's mm -hmm. crucial right mm -hmm. so it doesn't really matter what your end outcome is of like what you're what you propose like if you're just asked to design a product or so mm -hmm. on um, I mean, yes, it has to be sensible to yeah. some extent and reasonable, right? Um, but it's more so like, how did you come about there? Like, yeah. how did you get to that point, right? Yeah. So the different steps, the different thought process. Um, I think that's so being proactive in the interview and actually communicating and speaking out aloud. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, that's something that a lot of people um, tend to skip at times, yeah. you know, because you have different answers and you're like thinking different things. and you might skip some aspects and sometimes that's kind of like leaving the interviewer uh, on the other side thinking, um, did he think about that? Because like, yeah. they really want to like validate that you, you kind of know what to look for yeah. and are, are thinking about these different things. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably one. And then one that has worked really well for me is researching your interviewer, researching the company, uh, really putting yourself in the, in the shoes of someone there, right? Yes. If you were a PM at the company, right now right like yeah. even though you don't have the offer right how how like how would you think what would you do yeah and, and like just being in that mindset and and uh like knowing as much as you can from a, an outsider perspective mm -hmm. uh, helps you kind of i think be as close as possible to reality and i think it also in some senses uh, makes you stand out yeah. because a lot of interviewers appreciate that you took the extra time and the effort uh, and showed that genuine interest yeah. to actually learn and, and put yourself in the company uh, company shoes, right? And then I guess the last tip would be to have done interesting things. I think PM interviews um, are a culmination of your experiences. Yeah. So uh, the more experiences you can accumulate, you know, extracurriculars, leadership, projects, uh, previous co-ops, right? Like working with maybe uh, PMs at your company while, while you're in another kind of role. Um, and really interfacing and having things to talk about yeah. uh, makes it a lot easier. I mean, uh, most of the PM interview is talking. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. uh, I think real, having good things to talk about will definitely uh, leave a good impression and mm -hmm. make, make your conversation memorable.
What would what would you say your biggest obstacle was in um, in your career as like a PM? I think I'm still trying to overcome it. Yeah, and it's it could be a mindset thing as well, like experience or mindset thing. Yeah, I mean, I think the closest thing is, uh, I mean, it's fairly common. Yeah, but imposter syndrome is mm-hmm. definitely something that stands out because, especially as a PM, a lot of your colleagues at at work who are full time, right? Mm-hmm. They're like super experienced and. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of them have MBAs and like yeah. really accomplished backgrounds. And yeah. um, I mean, I think for me, it's like, am I, you know, in the right place? Am I good yeah. enough? You know, kind of thing. And also, you you also want to prove to yourself that uh, you can do it. You want to know, like you want to have that satisfaction yourself, like personally, yeah. that, you know, you can accomplish this or you can actually mm-hmm. do, uh, you know, PM yeah. if you're interested in it, right? Um, so I guess that's something that I'm constantly like, like learning, working towards battling. Yeah. Uh, it's not, it's not, I think it's something that's natural. Right? Yeah. And imposter uh, syndrome is like very, very um, yeah. prevalent in, in tech, especially. Yeah. So, I mean, that's probably the biggest thing that I see like time to time. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times like, damn, I don't know how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> no, like it's, it's also because like in tech, there's like so like, in, you know, PM specifically, it's yeah. like, there's a lot of different ways to get there. Mm-hmm. So sometimes like, um, you view like, even because I have it sometimes I have it too right like yeah. I look at a, a PM and I'm like wow like they went to Stanford they got like their PhD they got like they got masters and PhD and then they like they ship like this feature feature from Google and then they ship this feature from Facebook and now they're here and I'm working beside them and I'm like oh man like like what what have I done right <laughs> um and yeah. I, but at, at the same time it's like that how I kind of like kind of sometimes try to try to tell myself is that like you want you want to be surrounded by those people like those people would actually show you the ropes like yeah. then then because each pm has a different way of approaching things and because you're here and you're right beside them and everything like sometimes it's great to even just go grab mm-hmm. coffee with them yeah because i think that's because they kind of they share their experience mm-hmm. and sometimes they feel the same way right and then you like then, then they tell you how to do it right rather than watching this video actually finish watching this video <laughs> like you you, you 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 go you go in and you talk to your coworkers, and then you're like hey wow like they went through the same thing I, I did. And a lot of the times the path is, even though like, every path is unique, like, a lot of mentality is similar. Last question, um, kind of to finish it off, mm-hmm. what would kind of be your ultimate advice to uh, someone that's, uh, that's watching this video right now, that's looking into getting into PM? I would say the one thing I guess I look at, the, the way I approach things is finding opportunities and ter- making them reality. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's a philosophy or a perspective that I think basically embodies PM, right? Yeah. In industry as well. Um, it's probably also a good way to look at it if you're entrepreneurial. Yeah. Um, so keep a lookout for things that you think can be improved, right? And you're interested in and, and just make it happen. And yeah. even if it doesn't work out as intended, uh, you learn lots in the process. And, uh, you know, having things to talk about, experiences to reflect on mm-hmm. is always better than, than the not having. Not having, right? right. So, yeah. um, keep doing stuff thanks Kai thanks, for joining thanks Dan for hosting <laughs> no, 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 no. thanks Kai for joining like you know, Kai like, it's definitely really good that you're here if I'm gonna leave can your LinkedIn and stuff below yeah sure um, if you guys have any questions like hit them up um, if you hit the comments I'll send it to Kai make sure he sees it and then Kai will answer them if you if you have time yeah yeah, yeah. make so sure good, to yeah. like subscribe yeah, like subscribe <laughs> <laughs> like it's uh, it's something that like PM is still like a very vague kind of road um, so mm-hmm. even if both our roads kind of don't match yours hey keep doing what you're doing um and and just kind of take these tips in, into 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 aspect and then kind of navigate yourself um pm is still very new and it still has a lot of room for a lot of people yeah yeah and so hopefully this helps and if you have any questions or want to reach out feel free to do so we'd yeah. be happy to talk more yeah exactly all right see you guys <laughs> And oh. noon moment time. Julie's like, these guys talk way too much. These PM people. You haven't seen the one we did. It was like two hours straight. Whoa, really? Yeah.